They witnessed to a people that hungered for more in a land 10,000 miles from Taylor University. They witnessed through the word and talent because they were asked, asked not only by a select group from Formosa, but asked some 2,000 years ago by Jesus Christ. This is the story of a team's witness that won souls for Christ. We didn't understand this dramatic conversion, although I had experienced it. You know, I didn't know how this was going to work in other people's lives like that, but it did. And to me, that is the story of V.V. They were a hard-working family, a good family, but during the years of Don's junior high and high school, for some reason, they didn't attend church. They had in earlier years, but not in those years that were very vital, I think, in his life. And he, he was kind of a, a rough character, I would say. I, I meet people here, in fact, next door is a lady that knew him from Selma when he was a student. And they all respected him and admired him for his basketball ability and his outgoing personality. But they all said he was somewhat of a character. I saw Don Little play basketball when I was a seventh grader. That's what the huge impact he had on me, just from watching him play basketball. He was exciting. He was, he was different. And I thought, I'd like to be that way. And uh, I never could be that way, but I sure wanted to be because he was such a dynamic athlete. In 1951, a small international fellowship of Christians met and prayed, Lord, how can we share the gospel in our land? At the same time, Madam Chiang Kai-shek and her women's prayer group prayed for wisdom to reach the demoralized nationalist Chinese military. Dick Hillis, overseas crusades missionary, prayed for an open door into Taiwan's cities and schools. Colonel Paul Mao prayed that the Lord would multiply this Christian witness among army, navy, and government leaders. The result was a 10,000-mile telephone call to Coach Don Odell at Taylor University. Coach Odell was asked to consider the idea of bringing a basketball team to Taiwan for the express purpose of spreading the good word through basketball. It didn't take long for Coach Odell and his wife Bonnie to agree. Dick Hillis called Don Odell and asked if he could bring, uh, take a team out there. And Madam Chiang Kai-shek, the president's wife, had a prayer group there, and they were the ones that gave an official invitation for our team to go to Taiwan. I got a phone call from Odell, and he asked me if I would consider and even pray about being on that team. And I said, well, Don, um, there are some things in life you don't even need to pray about. I know that it's God's will that I, I join the team. The 1952 Venture for Victory team was comprised of Taylor basketball players Don Granitz, Jack Jackson, Howie Habecker, Johnny Nelson, Norm Holmescog, and Bud Schaefer, Wheaton College All-American. Coached by Odell, the first trip abroad provided the team with continuous opportunities to present their faith in Jesus Christ throughout the Orient. At the age of 21, I had never even flown in an airplane, and uh, from there we traveled, I think it was something like 47,000 miles that year in an airplane. So that was my first plane ride out of Fort Wayne all the way to the Far East. You asked the question, could it be done any other way? Uh, you send a lecturer out, it can't be done that way. Uh, uh, send an artist out, you might draw a certain kind of a crowd, uh, but only a certain kind, and only so many in the audience and so forth. I think maybe uh, the most impressive part of that was the way they came to the games. It didn't matter whether it was in um, the Olympic Stadium, uh, in Zal Rizal Stadium in the Philippines, in any of the major stadiums, or just one of the barrios where they just put up two baskets. People just came. They loved basketball and throughout the Orient. They love it. Uh, it was really a most magnificent experience. Uh, little did I know what it all held or how it would affect me. Uh, it was a leap of faith. Uh, Coach Ola was a visionary, and we just had faith in him that if, if he thought it could be done, we could do it. The 52 team's first stop was a two-week stay in Hawaii to train for the Asian climate. 
The first official stop was in the Philippines, where unbeknownst to the team, they were invited to play the Philippine Olympic team in front of 12,000 spectators, where they split a game apiece. The first year was marked by other popular contests, such as games played against Taiwan's national team, the Seven Tigers. Indicative of the first Venture for Victory Tour, the team's winning percentage during the life of the program was overwhelming. However, the success on the court paled in comparison to their success in sharing the gospel with tens of thousands throughout the years. There are six people in my life that uh, were defining moments in my Christian pilgrimage, and Coach Odell is one of those six. He, he coached me in basketball, he made me a better player, but he also was interested in my spiritual development. He prayed with me and for me. At the halftime or at the end of the game, we'd have a chance, us college guys, to open the Bible and share our testimony and some verses of scripture and flocked around uh, with these young men and women uh, all from all over the Orient. And uh, that was a huge impression on my life that a Christian in sports could share his faith to those that love that sport. That we were able to get in front of a group of which they would listen and it would be translated of what Jesus Christ meant to me as a young person and what I felt that I wanted to be in my ministry, but more so also in my dedication to wherever I am to be active for the Lord and especially uh, being involved with uh, young people. When Venture for Victory was created, little to no other sports evangelism programs existed. Today, there are literally hundreds worldwide. Don Odell and his teams were out front, blazing a trail in distant lands, spreading the gospel through the talents they possessed. I feel that God has really worked miracles for, for us, the first team to go. I think there, there was a purpose in, in, in us being there and being the ones that had the privilege to go. When he played basketball, he, he was known for the fast break. He would be the first one down to hit the basket. <laughs> and that kind of carried over in all of his life, even in this mission project. God is the one that has introduced this program and brought it to its beginning and it has continued on through the years. A lot of people in them have been involved. Dick Hillis, Bud Schaefer, Norm Cook, the players on the 52 team, Don, uh, you know, Coach Don Odell, they've all contributed. But there's one person, one factor, one power, one, and that's God himself that's done this. 